In this episode, we're going to be talking to Rosemary Ravenel, and she's a, an expert on communication, communication tools, and strategy to really help you to master and level up your communication. We subscribe to the idea that communication and marketing is, is important. And if you understand how to communicate, then marketing becomes uh, easier because marketing is, in fact, uh, the ability to communicate through acquisition of customers, right? So let's get started and dive into this conversation with Rosemary. And we'll see you on the other side. Hi, Rosemary. Welcome. Thank you for joining us on the show today. It's so great to have you here. Thank you, Ricardo. Really happy to be here. And awesome. And, you know, I, I'm really excited to, to hear what you're going to be sharing with us today because I know our guests um, uh, or listeners are going to be super, super uh, thrilled just to hear some of the, the, the things that you're going to be sharing. So why don't we start with uh, telling us who you are and telling us, telling us what you do. Wonderful. My name is Rosemary Ravenel, and most of my career was spent in corporate public relations, being the corporate leader, public relations head for major companies like Avon and AT&T, Discovery Channel, and the last position I held was at Univision. Mm -hmm. And I've always loved to do spokesperson work, but what I really loved to do was to help other executives be more powerful when it came time to speak. And in particular, I found that executives who speak two languages, but one is their dominant language, that they have an inherent weakness in the second language. And so I developed a specialty in coaching CEOs and presidents of companies on how they could do an effective speech in the other language. So it was building confidence and finding, finding a way for them to deliver the same information with authority, but in the language that was not their first. After 2019, I started the company in 2019. Of course, everything changed in 2020, but I started with the premise of working with authors and uh, CEOs and presidents of companies on doing yeah. public speaking and doing uh, keynotes and doing presentations and, and board meetings and all employee meetings and things of that nature. And it was going extremely well until March of 2020 when the world changed. Then I decided, well, how can I take this curriculum and put it to use? And lo and behold, of course, we were then meeting, li living our lives on Zoom and other platforms. So, so the, the migration to virtual sort of was by, by necessity. But here we are. Well, wow. yeah, you're absolutely right. Uh, here we are. And and how did you get to how did you get to this point? I mean, so you've built um, obviously a successful career. You're here. How did you get to this point? Let's say from a marketing perspective. I really just said I wanted to be a public speaking coach. Yes. And then how do I take these skills and these talents and this? wealth of experience I've had and put it to use in the moment when people were scrambling for how to how to convey their presence, how to run meetings, how to deal with the ubiquitous Zoom meetings in order to conduct business while working from home. So it became a an opportunity to say, how can I be of service? Yeah. How yeah. can I help people who are really uncomfortable being in front of a camera all day or who don't show up at all how can they have productive meetings how can they continue to to have strong team building relationships how can they do sales how can they serve as their customers in this environment and it just became gradually how opportunities started to unfold where i could apply what i knew as, as I was learning along the way, by the way, because I didn't start out being a, a Zoom expert, if I can call myself that, it became a, a sort of a progressive learning on the go as I found more tools and more ways to help people master this space. Yeah. And, and, and you're so right. I mean, so we're, we're talking in this conversation, we're really revolving it around Zoom, which, which you have learned how to um, navigate and um, and teach people how to to be very well presented and represented um, uh, with their brand and, and themselves using Zoom. And I love what you said about the idea that 
any of those uh, tasks, anything that you're doing, whether it's sales, uh, whether it's um, you're pitching uh, your company, whether it's just a regular team meeting. Um, I've been on so many Zoom where just nobody's sharing their camera and it's, it's you know, 50 people and nobody's sharing their, their camera. And so there are all these different things that um, people are uh, sometimes insensitive um, and unaware um, of the, the the benefits as well as as the the you know if you may protocols. So it's uh, it's it's pretty interesting for me to also learn because none of us uh, knew about this whole uh, Zoom and the Zoom expert and the the ability to navigate. So um, really really excited to talk a little more about it. So so you learned Zoom. You understood a little bit about how this whole it's, it's not even just Zoom, right? It's the concept of that video conferencing because then Correct. we could also talk the same way for Microsoft Teams and and for uh, WebEx and for all these other ones that are out there. Yeah, uh, there's, there's, there's many, many platforms. Of course, Zoom has become the shorthand, right? The Phoenix, right. the, the Xerox of video conferencing. Right. It's a nice word to say, but but we also have Teams and WebEx and many others that are used in enterprise situations. So all of this is about video communication. Ricardo, you, you mentioned that you have meetings where people don't turn on their videos. And I've got to tell you, that is probably the, the most wasted opportunity that we have. If we're talking brand building, if we're talking yeah. about business development, if we're talking about entrepreneurs like us really moving forward, we have yeah. to show up because how we show up, first of all, showing up, right, is 80% of winning the battle, right? You have to show up, yeah. you have to be there. Secondly, the way we as human beings process data, 90% of the data that we process, that our brains process is visual and only 10% is auditory. So 90 to 10, if we don't show up, we're giving away our 90%. So how can you, now that we know this is the way we're doing business, how can you give up that 90%, right? What is it that you don't know how to turn the camera on or you don't look good or you didn't dress that day or you have a messy workspace? Those aren't excuses anymore. They might've been excuses back in March and April when we were trying to figure out what the pandemic was gonna to do to our lives, right? When everybody was in sort of crisis mode, but we've had a year to learn this and to get it together. Plus we have now years ahead of us when companies have told us, you don't need to come to work every day. You can do a flex schedule. You can work at home part-time and you can come into the office other times. And companies of course are realizing there's tremendous economies, how they can save tons of money while keeping the same level of productivity by having teams work remotely. So it's not an option anymore. Yeah. So, 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 so the, and the idea of then, you know, so communication is crucial and it's, it's, it's very, it's very important during this time and using these conferencing tool to facilitate that. Um, it tells you that, listen, it doesn't matter what kind of business you're in. It doesn't matter who you are. You've got to then adapt, right? You've got to then adapt to the, the way of uh, how we are doing things today. Um, the new norm, if you may. Um, and, and so a lot of people would probably be asking, well, you know, I'm, a, I'm an entrepreneur, I, I run my own business, uh, you know, I don't necessarily see the value of using uh, communication tools, uh, it could be Zoom, it could be anything like we establish any of those tools. Uh, a lot of people are apprehensive about like, why would I need to, to then do follow these different protocols and, but it's communication, right, which is a big part of, um, of marketing yourself as a business, right. This show, we talk a lot uh, to non-tech savvy business owners and, and entrepreneurs and startup. And so they may be listening and thinking, well, you know, I probably don't need to show myself on, on Zoom. Maybe mm -hmm. you could just talk on the phone. And, um, you know, I don't see the, 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 the reason for doing that. But this is why we brought you here to, to really demystify that myth and, and let people understand that, listen, a big part of you showing up, like you just talked about that 90-10 rule, it's, it's really just being there and being present. Um, talk to me a little bit about like, like those folks who believe that this tool, the communication tools that exist now online for us to use uh, to continue our process of whether making business, building relationships, um, they don't feel like it's for them. Like who, who would you then recommend 
um, these, these kind of communication tools for? Everyone, everyone who's in business needs to know how to do this. And it isn't just about the technology, about knowing what buttons to, to click and, and the different functionalities of, of doing a shared whiteboard and, and share screen and, and, and all those advanced features. That's all fine and good, but it starts with you. You've got to show your face. And one thing that I, it's, it, I'm becoming the evangelist for <laughs> how you show up is what will determine the future of your business, your career, and your brand. It will inf influence your reputation in ways that you can't even imagine. I could tell you stories of people who have lost their jobs because of the way they showed up, or people who, who have had their careers ruined because they, they totally misused this opportunity, this space, this virtual wow. space that we occupy. And that's not optional. That's just really sloppy. That is disrespectful to the individual and the people who are at the other end. What do I mean by, by, by you, you're giving up your power? Everything that's in the shot is information about us. Yes. Everything speaks to who we are. Everything says what we stand for, what we believe, what our brands are, what value we bring, what service we offer, everything. And we can do this in our own person in our own appearance, the way we show up well-dressed, well-dressed dressed for the occasion, dressed for the appropriateness of the communication, well-groomed, right? In a setting that's orderly, surrounded perhaps by things that are product-related or service-related. Now you can, have, you can have all kinds of objects, not necessarily, well, green screen can work to your advantage that way too, but you can populate your shot with things that talk to you, that talk to what your sports interests are, what your, what your service offer is, things that are thematically appropriate to what you do. So you can create a set that really is full of visual data, visual cues that complement what you're saying. If you don't do that, you're, you're totally missing out. Properly lit, properly framed, sit, standing or sitting in the middle of your shot, having good audio, good, good video quality. And all of that is, 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 is paramount. How many times, Ricardo, have you been on a, on a group call where either somebody doesn't show up or somebody is framed poorly looking up at the camera or looking down, poor, properly lit where you can't even see their faces because the light is behind them? Mm -hmm. What does that say time. about that person? Would you do business with that person? Would you would you expect that person to, 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 to sell you something? Would you have trust that that, that that person's business is really going to serve you? Are you going to invest in that business? I'm sorry, but the same way that you wouldn't show up in your pajamas to make a sales call, yeah. you don't do that when you are showing up on one of these video platforms. It's just it's just basic common sense. Yeah. And no, and that's and that's so powerful, right? Because it's almost now that we are essentially forced to do this because this is we we don't have many alternatives, right? Which is which is which is my next question, because uh, the the biggest alternative is to you know let's go to Starbucks or let's go to a, a physical room and let's do a conference room and let's talk face to face. Um, but but that aside, given the situation that we're in the, the this this e era, what are then some of these alternatives if somebody doesn't want to um, um, to say you know I I really don't want to get uh, my face show my face yet I don't want to I don't want to 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 be in a in a in a in a video conference environment yet. Uh, do they have an option? Like, uh, how how is this yes. how is yes. this different from from some of the alternatives that are, that might be out there? Well, it's about picking the right tool, right? Pick the right tool. Video conferencing has been abused because it's like, oh, let's have a meeting. Let's let's do it on Zoom. It might not be the appropriate tool for that engagement, right? There may be a better better served by exchanging emails or, or doing a quick WhatsApp or doing just a phone call would be fine. Really think through how important is it to be connected by video because then it makes our video meetings all the more special and important, right? Yes. Something, something that you do from, from morning to night, it gets, you know, it gets 
uh, tiring. It's it's draining. It's it's like you don't look forward to it. The fatigue is too much. We're looking constantly at a screen. We know that that's not good for our eyes. Our brains are processing information, you know, at very rapid rates. But is it always necessary, or can you accomplish the same thing using other more conventional tools? Right. And I think that that's where we have to be use our judgment to say what what tool do I need to accomplish this particular goal? Yeah. And that's, and that's an important point, right? Because I think um, to each his own, and you have to make that determination as to, is a Zoom call right for this, uh, this occasion? Uh, is it better if you do a phone, like you said? And that's a very interesting point, because a lot of times people show up and they're unprepared. And this is, this is what you're saying, like, if you're going to go for the Zoom call, which is the video, I mean, the video conference, it doesn't matter, it doesn't have to be Zoom. But if you're going for the video conference and call, make sure that you are uh, you you look the part and you are you're fitting in uh with the necessary um you know standards and um and and protocol the way do we do things on video and then you if you're choosing any other option i i think it's the same uh, the same advice right make sure that you're uh you're you're uh, ready to 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 treat with this the 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 necessary uh, options that you're going to choose if it's the phone email there this it's all about communication which i think that's the the essence of the conversation whether or not you're going to use a, a a web conferencing tool or a telephone conferencing tool uh you know any of those other tools it's important but tell us though um what can we actually do with a with a video conference and tool like this because i think a lot of people think that okay they just have to show up turn on their camera and they just sit there and they just listen or if they're speaking they they're not moving nothing but tell us some <laughs> of the things give us educate us on some of the things that we can do um with a a, a video conferencing tool like this sure well the thing is we are human beings in these brady bunch tiles but we're alive, we yeah. have energy, right? So we can't be just static, kind of like, you know, pieces on a, on, on a bingo board. Right. We, we are, we, we have to animate our participation. So that if I'm, if there's, there's a whole kind of formula to doing effective meetings. How do you run good meetings where people are engaged, they're participating, they're, they're being informed and they're giving you feedback. So that it becomes like, really time well spent, right? Yeah. Most people are just receiving and it's like the drone of this PowerPoint presentation, but people don't realize that they can animate how they lead a meeting. They can have good body language. They can, they can use vocal variety in order to really keep people interested in what they have to say. Yeah. They can, they can, they can uh, have people take different roles Right. Somebody can be the technical director, someone can be the, the scribe, someone can monitor the chat, someone can take a different part of the agenda and present it. You can do breakouts, you can do polls. There's a lot of things that you can do to make people participants and stakeholders in the process. If they're just sitting there taking up space, that's really a waste. And it does, it, it does little to keep them really being supportive of your idea, right? Yeah. And they're going to tune out and they're going to be so, so tempted to go look at their phones, right? Or start typing something and doing something else. You don't want to be multitasking. You want people to be, say, let's see, an hour meeting is typically what you might schedule. Break it down to try to make it 15 and make those 15 minutes really sizzle, right? So that people yeah. come to the meeting saying, oh, I have a role. I'm going to be presenting this, right? Or I've been given the task of doing X so that they feel there are stakeholders in the success of the meeting. It's not one way anymore. So that the, the energy that we convey, both in our, in our vocal variety, our tone, our cadence, and as well as our body language, you know that if we emote and we use our facial expressions, our hands, we can use the upper part of our bodies to say a lot, right? Yes. Like 100,000 facial expressions, and there's a lot of things you can do with your hands. But it, it augments people's understanding about 60% of what we say is enhanced by body language. And isn't it nice when you're talking and you have someone smiling or nodding, you know, they're acknowledging, they're honoring what you're saying by, by just those simple expressions, right? So there's a lot that we can do to make this 
make virtual more human. This podcast is sponsored by MeisterTask, the most intuitive task manager on the web. Uh, MeisterTask is an easy to use project management tool, makes it easy and fun, colorful to get all your projects managed in one place. As an entrepreneur, I use MeisterTask to help me manage all of my projects. Um, I can drag and drop different tasks. I can assign key people to the task. I can set deadlines and schedules and enjoy just the beautiful colors while I do that. Uh, so uh, if you are interested in MeisterTask.com, go to slash DMT tools. That's M E I S T E R. T-A-S-K dot com slash DMT tools and you can sign up for a free trial when you upgrade to the pro plan. So get started for free today and um, invite um, your team members and get uh, and get productive together. And and which which uh, to me because you mentioned and there are like a hundred thousand different potentially have adapt to um, using your hands um, and this is really good because I can think of uh, you know if you are a consultant or if you are a uh, a doctor who's got to see your patient and you have to do a a, a, a conference like this. Well, like we do consultation sessions via video all the time. So if, if anyone who is listening is a consultant or a professional and renders professional service, an attorney, uh, you have to see a physical therapist. Like you have to get on a call like this to see your clients. Um, this is this is good information for you because it's 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 going to it's going to be the thing that separates you from everybody right. else who is also doing video conferencing, right? And it's also going to separate you from from the, your, just just ensuring that your client understand that wow this this wow experience that your client would have had it causes them to come back, right? Because we're going to be in this situation for for i usually say for a minute I mean, it actually means for a while uh we're we're going to be we're already a year into pandemic and uh we don't know how how much longer it's going to be there but imagine that you have the ability as the host or as a participant in a in a web conference in um environment to make an impact this is what this is what i'm taking away from what you're uh, from what you're saying so so if if listeners are interested in in then you know how can they uh take advantage of uh web conferencing tools what should they need to uh to to know or to do to use it right um you know we know a lot of the web conference tools are free maybe you might have to pay some some subscription at some point but talk to me ab- around some of the, uh, the things that you need to then um, prepare yourself for. You know, I know we use green screen, for example, and some right. of the other accessories and so forth that anyone who's listening and says, well, you know, I've got to, uh, you know, I've got to go and get myself together to get on because I do have, as I'm listening to this podcast, I have a Zoom call coming up and this is going to make sense for me and I need to go get that. So talk to us a little about some of these things that um, folks can, um, sure. can, then, can then understand. I will give you a checklist. And by the way, I also have a once a month mini Zoom camp, which is oh, wow. on on the third Wednesday of every month from 4 to 5.30. And I go deep into all of the, the best practices of, of using this platform. Yes. And, okay, so in a nutshell, Ricardo, you need to know your equipment, not necessarily to invest in a fancy HD camera, but know what you can do with what you have. Some people yes. do very well with an iPhone, right? Yes. But be well lit, be in a setting that is consistent with your brand, that yeah, is yeah. that is 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 comfortable where you're you're sitting in a place that's quiet where you have you're in command of the space and you're well framed you're well lit and you can yeah. make eye contact with the camera right you, the camera's not above or below you 
And that's number one. Secondly, if you do want to invest, there's tons of great products, even on Amazon, that are priced very reasonably. And you can do a lot of trial and error, see which lights might work better in your setting. You might have a lot of natural sunlight coming in in your office. You may not need as many lights. But I can, I can bet you that just about anyone, even those who may have children at home, can find a corner or a little space, a little niche in their homes where they can conduct these kinds of video meetings. Something that might have an interesting background with a, a, a framed photograph or a poster or, or plants or maps or, or sports memorabilia or diplomas or things that are important to you that okay. illustrate a little bit of who you are, that give you personality. For example, I, had a, I have a client who uh, uh, was unaware of the importance of the visual cues in setting up his shot. I suggested, I asked him if he, what his sports, um, what, if he played sports, and he said basketball is his passion. So the next time we met, he said he had put sports, uh, sports uh, memorabilia in the background, right. and already he'd had very meaningful conversations with clients because that was a, that was a starter conversation about, about, about basketball. So it, it, just, it just makes us more human, more personable, more likable, right? Are we, are we people we want to do business with? Are we being perceived as human as, as, and not just these avatars, right, that, that appear on a screen? So we can do so much with what we have on hand. Sometimes I work with a client and they may have a terrible background, not virtual, but physical. And I say, well, do you have, do you have some vases? Do you have a plant? Do you have a wool globe? Would you have any ceramics that are colorful? What kinds of books can you put in the background? And just gathering stuff that they may have around the house. You can put together a vignette, sort of, you can adorn your canvas in a way that when you sit in front of the camera, you turn on, you start the call, you feel like you're, you're really powerful, right? You have, you, you're in your space, you're, you're behind the driver's seat. And it yeah. just boosts your confidence and your credibility so much. Wow, man, this is so, this is so much. I, I really love this. I, I, you mentioned earlier about uh, um, continuous conversation that you have through, uh, through a, weekly, um, a weekly event. And uh, we, we wanna talk a little about that and just um, give people an option to tuning and connect with you there because I think, I think this requires more than one conversation. This requires some, some continuous effort and, and connecting with you as the expert. Um, I think if, if this is how you are going to then get to your goal by, by utilizing these, uh, these, these communication tools, you really need to connect with someone like Rosemary because she's able to help you to really get the best out of it, right? And we're talking about, we're not just talking about uh, an expert. We're talking about someone with uh, years of experience with communication. So it's not just knowing how to use a tool, but knowing what to do with, uh, right. with it and how to position yourself to get the best out of it. So, I, and I know that, you know, obviously you've been in, in, in this space for years um, and I know it, 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 it's not easy just, just, just enduring a career for so many years. Um, how have you done it though? And how, how have you done it? And, and what would you say was the best thing that ever happened to you during your, uh, during your career? Ooh, that's a complicated question. <laughs> the most, the best thing that happened to me during my career, there's many, many, many special moments. Yes. I have to say that when I was tapped by MSNBC to be the first and only at that time Hispanic contributor, uh, that, was, that was about 20 years ago when they first went on air. And it was such an honor to sit around the table with with very intelligent, accomplished people who were just weighing in on the day's events. We weren't briefed. We weren't given any advance notice of what the topics would be. We were just asked to comment on how we saw things. Obviously, cable news has changed a great deal since then. Yeah. But it was an opportunity to be spontaneous, to, be, to have an improvisational moment live, okay. just looking at the camera, just talking and knowing that this was going out to millions of homes. That was perhaps a moment that I said, well, if I'm not confident in what I'm doing now, then I, I'm not meant to do this. It, I just really had to be whole inside to be able to give my best 
at that moment. And so it, it taught me a great deal of the importance and the power of video. And I'm, I'm, and we're seeing it today. Video is king, right? TikTok. Yeah. I mean, it, well, the way we communicate in, video, in terms of the marketing arsenal, you know, yeah. you know full well that, that video is what pulls. And if, even if we're not doing it in a streaming platform, but just how we come across even in a recorded video, just again, we need to learn how to do that because I think it will set apart those who can do it and those who can't. Well, that's, that is so true. I really love that. And I think um, I want to give folks an opportunity to, 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 to know how do they, how do they find you? Um, talk to me a little about this uh, program that you, um, you've created to help uh, um, you know, entrepreneurs and marketers and, and anyone who is listening who says, oh, you know, I'm about to start my business and this is great. I've, I've started. I've always been nervous about getting in front of the camera. Um, you have an opportunity, folks, to connect uh, with Rosemary and to have her be a part of uh, your endeavors to be successful. So talk to me a little about, Rose, where can we then find uh, this yes. event um, share some of that, 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 that with us. Well, it's rosemaryravenel.com. And my last name is spelled R-A-V like Victor, I-N-A-L. Mm -hmm. And go to my website. You'll see the link for mini Zoom camp. And it is once a month. I may increase the frequency. Uh, the next one coming up is March 17th. And it's 4 to 5.30 Eastern time. And uh, there's an Eventbrite link, and it is, I can assure you, it's going to be the best 90 minutes you've spent talking about how to improve your video communications. I also do one-on-one -on -one consult consultations. I do small team trainings, and I work with uh, executives one-on-one -on -one for speech making. So, and I do all this in English and in Espanol. So that's, it's a very bespoke service. And I also do these, these public workshops and everyone who's taken the workshop is really, you know, taken a lot of immediate. I mean, this is the thing. It's something you can put into practice right away. Yes. It's, and it's not, it's not complicated. A lot of it is basic understanding of the power of the visual to drive home your point. Yes. And that's, and that's what I like about it. The, the ability to then, take away uh, some things from this conversation and just implement it right away. Um, and it's totally at no cost. It's just, just making some changes, just doing some things differently. Um, and if you want to maximize on that, uh, please, uh, you know, you've got Rosemary to connect with. Uh, we're going to be uh, sharing her uh, or her website information in the show notes. We're going to be talking some more about um, some of the things that you could potentially do uh, around just growing, right? Because this, this podcast is helping folks to grow. And this is a communication tool is such an important part of everything that you're doing, right? It's marketing, it's marketing. Um, mm -hmm. We use, uh, we use communication tools to connect and to train and do all these different things. Um, Rosemary, is there anything that uh, I didn't ask you that you'd like to share with us today? Well, we can continue having another long conversation, <laughs> so I hope you'll invite me back. As far as, look, if we don't realize that the first seven seconds is where we establish that first impression, right? Seven seconds, right? So you turn on your camera, you join a meeting. Yes. The, those first seven seconds will etch in other people's minds what they think of you. Right. And, and trying to, to make a good second impression is very difficult. So get it right the first time. Right. Be be very self-aware. How are you coming across? You know how to work the technology. Certainly that's that's fundamental. Right. Yes, so yes. that you can know how to how to make take advantage of the 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 features of the technology platform. You have to know your, your, your stuff, know how to work your audio, know how to work your lights and so forth. But then when you sit in front of that camera, know that you have done everything to create that, that canvas that best represents who you are and what you stand for. And then we can also get more into more, more uh, sophisticated uh, sort of the content of the communication, how you come across, how you speak, how you manage meetings. So there's other levels besides looking good. But, that, but if we start with making that first impression by showing up at, as your best 
And again, people who do makeovers with me just are transformed because maybe it's just a matter of putting better lighting in front of you. So you can actually see your face and see the color of your eyes, right? All these things establish trust between people. And we need to work a little harder to establish trust through virtual platforms. Yes. I really hope that at some point, maybe one of the uh, creators of these uh, video conferences too would hear this podcast and invite you to speak to, uh, to to their audience at one of their their massive uh, conference because I know Zoom has these massive conferences every year. I think it's called Zoom Topia or something. Yes, that's right. Zoom Topia, um, and uh, I know Microsoft does as well, and WebEx. And but this is this is so valuable for folks who uh, then believe in the power of these kinds of tools to have these kinds of conversation alongside with, it's not just about the features, right? And it's not just about the functionalities because there's so much that that can do. You're really going to need some of these nuggets that Rosemary is sharing around how you sit, like the a feature can tell you how you, how you're supposed to sit, how you're supposed to make certain gestures and smile and doing all these different things. So yeah, it's uh, the color, combination even, of both. Even the color of what you, of what you wear. The color of what you're wearing. Yes. Mm-hmm. So that's so th- those are super important. Wow, what a what an incredible conversation, uh, Rosemary. And yes, you are welcome to come back. We'd certainly mm-hmm. want to have a part two about this because I think we have to be reminded this is such such an important um, um, element of our lives. Like we wake up to a Zoom call, <laughs> we spend or like I spend I don't know hours and hours on on Zoom calls every single day and it's uh it's it's crazy i can't imagine how many people out there are just having to wake up and end their days just on calls because of the situation that we're in and so here you get an opportunity folks to optimize that you know optimize this with uh with rosemary find her online go to her website tell us again uh, the website uh, that we can go and find you rosemaryravenel.com all together rosemaryravenel.com. And this, there's, a, there's a, a little a treat for you when you visit the homepage, you'll see something called Zoom Score. And it's a little, it's, it's a little quiz that gives you basically four fundamental questions that speak to the essential skills of a, of a professional video meeting. So it, it, it asks you a multiple choice, what, how would you handle the situation? And then you'll get your score rated on a scale of one to 10. So it'll give you a little, a little sense of how much you have to learn. And yeah. I think it will, it will challenge your way of thinking. Interesting. As a, yes, you, you should go get your Zoom score mm-hmm. and go figure out what that is. And, uh, and if there is lacking, I'm sure there, we are all needing some improvements, right? Um, and I'm, I'm definitely going to be reaching out to you too, because I need to make sure that uh, we, 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 we tapping on some of those opportunities to, to do better on a, on a Zoom call. Well, it was really awesome to, to have you on our show uh, today, Rosemary. Uh, I really, really appreciate it. And we're definitely looking forward to seeing you again soon. I enjoyed it very much, Ricardo. Thank you for the opportunity. All right. All right, folks, there you go. And uh, until next time, We'll talk uh, about a tool to help you to rule your growth. That was Rosemary Ravenel. This is uh, was an amazing conversation, guys. I really enjoyed uh, enjoyed it. I learned a ton. I hope you also enjoyed it, and I hope that you could take away some nuggets to help you to to better and level up your communication uh, as you seek to get uh, more clients and more customers and more places. So until next time, don't forget to choose a tool to help you to rule your growth. Talk soon.